Your radio on air online, Lake 96.1, Saturday at the 70s, wrapping up Homemade Hitmakers Month this week with a group that had its genesis in Brookfield, moved on to Madison, came back to Milwaukee, and when they did, they got plenty of support from local radio and a national recording contract. That band would be yipes, including Pat McCurdy, Andy Bartell, Mike Hoffman, Teddy Freeze, and our guest today, the bass player for the band Yipes, Pete Strand, joins us on the program. And Pete, thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. It's my pleasure, Ted. Now, Yipes was uh, an evolution because you were you and Pat and a few of the other members were a part of another band before Yipes came about, correct? That is right, yeah. Uh, actually, uh, Pat McCurdy, Mike Hoffman, and I literally started playing together in ninth or tenth grade in my parents' basement and garage and uh coming out of there we we had a band in the milwaukee area and then pat and i ended up going to the university of wisconsin and we started a band over there that was called slick and uh you know we 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 started to get some traction and and uh we we started playing the regular circuit and got a good following in madison and, and a few other places and and uh, yeah and then yipes sort of naturally evolved um out of slick we made some changes and new wave kind of hit us all pretty hard and we decided that was really where we should be and pat had met andy bartell who became the lead guitar player for yipes and uh they had played together for a few months in a band up in sheboygan and they came back down to madison where mike and i were and said you know let's form this band and andy knew teddy and in kenosha big booming drummer so we got together and in the fall of 77 we woodshedded in in pat's parents basement they had gone on a vacation for a couple weeks so we just set up down in the basement and rehearsed for about 20 days straight and then took it on the road what was the point where you were discovered and moved on to a national recording contract where when did that happen well uh let's see so we got together and hit the road in november of 77 by the summer of 78 we started to get some attention we started to build a following we we had been based in madison and moved back to milwaukee and there was a great club in milwaukee called what was called the electric ballroom and then they converted it to they changed the name to the palm mm-hmm. and we started to do well there and do well in minneapolis and and uh, a few other cities madison of course in the, I think it was in early 1979, our manager made a connection with a guy named Jimmy Einer, who was the president of Millennium Records, which was an RCA label. And, and Jimmy, we knew we knew of him very well because he had produced all the Raspberries records, and Raspberries were sort of power pop gods. Mm-hmm. You know, he got interested in us and and heard our demos, you know, and decided to come out to see us and. He did, and he was, I guess he was impressed enough to offer us a record contract, which he did, and that, that came together in the late spring of 79. And we went down to Lake Geneva back in the days where there was the Playboy Club in Lake Geneva. Right. Uh, there was a really high quality, uh, recording studio, uh, at the Playboy Club called Shade Tree. Mm-hmm. And so we checked into the Hilton in Lake Geneva for about a month and, and spent the month making the first Yipes record there. And, you know, we were always ordering from Popeyes, and, and uh, <laughs> when I wasn't recording, I was able to spend some time wandering around Lake Geneva and get to know a little bit. So Sure. Were you guys happy with the uh, support that Millennium gave you for that first album? Uh, yeah, I, I think we were by and large. They were not ever quite sure how to market us. If you had the two album covers in front of you, you'd see there's a pretty big difference in the way we look on album number one versus album number two. That's and, true. Uh, Jimmy Einer and Millennium kind of took a page from Columbia uh, Records with Elvis Costello. We all knew that Elvis was a new waver and, and kind of came out of that that new wave scene, you know. Mm-hmm. But Columbia was very clear that they weren't going to label him new wave. They just put him out there as rock. And Millennium decided that that was a better sell for us, and I don't think any of us ever were really happy with that. You know, we didn't look like we looked uh, on the album cover. That's not how we normally looked when we played. And, uh, you know, I mean, we were a skinny tie band. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I understood what their strategy was. I think they were afraid that it would be too niche. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think that 
we could have built out of the niche, which is what bands like the Knack and the Romantics and the Cars and the Off Broadway down here in Chicago did. You know, they were they were rock bands, but they had that kind of new wave cred, and it got the new wavers interested in them.